defeat, my defeat, my solitude and my aloofness. You are dearer to me than a thousand triumphs and sweeter to my heart than all world glory. Hi, this is Nidish Vasu and I read writings and poetry from the great saints and sages from across time to help us introspect where we are at in our lives at the moment and to help us evolve and become better students, better children, better parents, better friends, better lovers and better humans. Welcome to a Stereo Tales presentation. You're listening to Sages and the Madman with Nadish Vasu. Thank you for listening into my podcast. This week, we continue reading from Khalil Gibran's work. And in each episode, we'll also try to gather insights into the experiences and struggles of Gibran's life that shaped his personality and inspired his work. We've discussed about the women who influenced and facilitated Gibran and his artistic ambitions. His mother, who ensured he was getting education and was the only family member who was excused from earning, was supposedly the first person who truly got him. Gibran's sister, Mariana, who by the time Gibran was 20, was the only surviving family member, adored him, provided for him and cared for him till the end. However, Gibran's story would not be complete, or rather, I'd say his story wouldn't have started if not for Mary Haskell. Their partnership is so unique, lovely and unusual that it would take us more than one episode to cover the depth of it. Gibran had returned from Beirut and had decided that he would be a writer as well as a painter. In 1904, his friend, uh, supporter Holland Day, held an exhibition of Gibran's drawings. And that is where Gibran, barely 21 years old, met Mary Haskell, almost 10 years senior to him. Mary was a schoolmistress and did not have a fortune. Their friendship grew and she was so impressed with his art that despite her limited means, she became his champion and philanthropist. In 1908, she offered to give Gibran a stipend of $75 a month to go and study painting in Paris. In a letter to a friend, Gibran says about Mary, She is an angel who is ushering me towards a splendid future and paving for me the path to intellectual and financial success. The day will come when I shall be able to say, I became an artist through Mary Haskell. This was a huge turning point in Gibran's life as their friendship grew into something deeper with their being apart. They wrote beautiful and soulful letters to each other. In a letter to Mary, Gibran says, I think of you today, beloved friend, as I think of no other living person. And as I think of you, life becomes better and higher and much more beautiful. I kiss your hand, dear Mary, and in kissing your hand, I bless myself. Gibran was besotted and enamored with her kind and compassionate heart. Over time, he saw Mary as a partner who could understand his mind with all its darkness and light and still care for it. Gibran professed his love to Mary and they were engaged when he got back from Paris. But this was not a common love not a love that needs to be obtained or fulfilled. As radical as it was in those times, they chose not to marry, but remain in each other's life significantly. He moved to New York to establish himself and Mary continued to support him through his most difficult failures. More about their love in the next episode. Today we'll take a look at a poem from Khalil Gibran's The Madman called Defeat. Defeat, my defeat, my solitude and my aloofness. You are dearer to me than a thousand triumphs and sweeter to my heart than all world glory. Defeat, my defeat, my self-knowledge and my defiance. Through you, I know that I am yet young and swift of foot and not to be trapped by withering laurels and in you, 
I have found aloneness and the joy of being shunned and scorned. Defeat my defeat, my shining sword and shield. In your eyes I have read that to be enthroned is to be enslaved and to be understood is to be leveled down. And to be grasped is but to reach one's fullness and like a ripe fruit to fall and be consumed. Defeat my defeat, my bold companion. You shall hear my songs and my cries and my silences. And none but you shall speak to me of the beating of wings and urging of seas and of mountains that burn in the night. And you alone shall climb my steep and rocky soul. Defeat my defeat, my deathless courage. You and I shall laugh together with the storm and together we shall dig graves for all that die in us and we shall stand in the sun with a will and we shall be dangerous. Gibran opens this poem personifying defeat. Here he makes a big statement about how we should approach defeat by not calling ourselves defeated or failures. He separated himself from defeat. His identity is not defeat. And what a contrarian view on defeat. He calls defeat dearer and sweeter than triumph and world glory. Defeat has made him self-aware and defiant. And because he keeps trying again and again and doesn't give up, it makes him feel young and able. Laurels satiate your ego and limit you from achieving greater feats. Whereas defeat sets you free from these limitations. He finds that he's shunned and scorned. Being scorned fuels the urge to outperform and that is a joy greater than being enthroned. This also gives him the blessing of solitude and aloneness. Just what he needs to grow spiritually. He calls defeat his sword and shield, a weapon and a protection to take on his challenge again. He realizes that stature and understanding will enslave or decimate him, likening him to a fruit who would ripen and fall and be consumed, thereby ending his journey. He calls defeat a friend. He speaks of the songs and cries and silences that he will share with defeat and that they will speak about the beating of wings, which probably refers to the work that needs to be done or the effort that needs to be made as he is called by the urging of seas, which refers to the adventures that are yet to be had or new frontiers to be discovered or new depths to be unraveled. And the mountains that burn in the night likely refer to the lofty goals and peaks that shine before him. Goals yet to be accomplished and they're burning and filling him with ambition, desire, and motivation to keep going on. He only lets defeat in deep within his soul. Defeat is what helps him go within and introspect. He is forced to look within and this forces him to grow and evolve. He becomes courageous. He now does not fear defeat. Defeat is his friend. He mocks life's storms. He is ready to be victorious over his own weaknesses and fears and insecurities. They die within him as he keeps going on. He faces each challenge fearlessly, bare naked, strong-willed. Defeat has made him dangerous. He is unstoppable. Want better motivation? Who of us has not faced defeat or feared defeat? Can we also turn defeat from foe to friend? How do we connect with this poem? How have we taken defeat each time? As a child, as a youth, in the prime of our lives? I'd love to hear your take on this poem and how you've connected with it in your life. At such a time in the world, it's a poem that really shows us how to deal with the curveballs life's throwing at us. I hope that introspecting on this could be a first step to talking and dealing with your new friend. 
Thank you for listening in to this week's episode. Please try to take some time out in the quiet just before you go to sleep. For yourself, loving yourself, appreciating the good from the day and the lessons you've learned. Please do send out a prayer of healing for the world as the world tries to get back on its feet. Pray for those in need of healing and those at high risk. See you next week and be safe. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, please hit subscribe and make sure you share the link with others who'd enjoy the experience. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at the madman at stereotales.com with your thoughts, suggestions, questions, ideas, and more. Please also write in if you'd like to partner with us or if you'd like to feature us on your blog or newsletter. Don't forget to rate our podcast. Thank you for listening and for all your support. You've been listening to a Stereo Tales presentation.